Good afternoon. In the last video, you guys saw how we were putting out some hay, you know, it, uh, in the dark, you know, using the tractor and stuff like that. And if you were paying attention, one of the things that we had to do was we had to pull the net wrap off of the round bale. So what I wanted to do is do a real quick video on hay, how we feed our hay, what, you know, there's, there's different kinds of bales. There's round bales and small square bales, even large square bales. Um, but I just wanted to go through the, the hay or the hay bales that we use. Um, and then just talk about the processes and why we do what we do, why you see net wrap on some, why we feed round bales and not square bales. Um, so just wanted to go over some of those things and kind of put, give some insight into how we feed in the winter and the, the ways that we do it and why we do the things that we do. brought up a small square bale just so you could see the size difference between the small square and the big round. The big round that we have, it's an average size round bale. You can get smaller ones, you can get bigger ones. This is middle of the road. So to give you an idea of how big the round bale is, there's between 25, between 20 and 25 small square bales to one round bale. So we got 20 to 25 of the little ones inside the big one. And there's some um, some things that go to play with that, you know, the density of the round bale. If it's a if it's more dense, it's going to have more hay, um, more more of the smaller round. Uh, I'm sorry, it'll have more of the small squares, more hay in it because it's more dense. Um, so that's just to give you a quick illustration. Now you might be asking, okay, well, I see that this has got net wrap on it. In the last video, you were taking the net wrap off. And, you know, why, and why were you doing that? And the reason is, is because we don't want to feed that plastic net wrap out. <clears throat> um, if the cattle eat it, it can really do a lot of damage to them. What will happen is, is they'll fill their stomachs up with that plastic. It'll just sit in there and then they'll essentially starve to death because that plastic will just sit in their guts and even though they're probably still ingesting hay, it's not being broke down and you know they're not getting enough nutrient to you know sustain their bodies and stuff like that. So you know it's really important that we take the net wrap off. So that's the big difference between the small square and the big round. Now, you might be asking, okay, well, are they all net wrapped? No, they're not. We've got bales that are tied with string. And you might be asking, well, why do you have some that are with string and some that aren't? And the answer is simple. It's just some of our balers, they use the net wrap and some of them don't. The ones that use the net wrap, um, obviously we have that. And you know, the ones that don't, we don't. So the difference is um, when we are feeding them out, um, you know, the, the strings all have to be removed no matter what, be it the net wrap or the string or whatever, it's all gotta come off. So now you're at, if you're wondering, well, is there one that's better than the other? And for us, no, they each have their own pros and cons. Um, you know, I guess I do like the net wrap a little bit better. Um, we have, the net wrap protects the bale better. And so you can see it's it's got snow on it. You know, it's... It's keeping the water off of the bale, you know. So, yeah, some water does get into it um, as that snow melts and as it rains and stuff. But a lot of it gets repelled off from that net wrap. And it actually keeps a lot of the rain and moisture out of the bale. So we have less loss due to the elements and just the breaking down of the hay. So 
you know, this outer stuff here on the hay, you know, the cattle aren't going to eat this, you know, so there is a little bit of loss on it. Um, so we have less, less with the net wrap than what we do with the string. Now the disadvantage to the net wrap is this time of year when it's cold, sometimes the net wrap can get frozen and then it's really hard to get off. And like I said before, we really need to make sure to get all of this off so that we're not, um, we're not hurting the cattle, you know, and accidentally feeding it out. The other thing, you know, you might see is, you know, the color difference. So you saw that this one here is just a really dark, deep green. This is a little more yellow. Um, this is a deeper, darker green because this has been stored in our barn. Um, if you saw the videos that we had earlier where the haymow came down, you saw us move these. Um, and they're just, a lot of this is, this is discolored from the sunlight. And this has been in the barn where it hasn't had any sunlight, so it hasn't been bleached by the sun. Um, let me see if I can't um, see over here. This one here is a little darker. Let me get in here. And you can see, you know, it's kind of hard to tell, but there is actually, there we go. There's a lot of green in this one as well. It's just you have to get into it. Um, you know, this outer layer, there's really, you know, maybe an inch or so that's been damaged by the weather. Um, but once you get inside of it, you know, it, it does, it is good hay that's on the inside. So there is a little bit of loss, um, but frankly, what I gain is productivity in that, Instead of having to handle 20 or 25 small square bales every time I need to feed, I can just hook in with the tractor and just, you know, put the bale spear on, spear into one of these, pull the strings off, pull the net wrap off, drop it in the feeder, and I'm done. Uh, if I was to do that with the small squares, you know, obviously it's very labor intensive and it's labor intensive just trying to make hay you know I've got to handle this once and I can use a tractor to do it every single one of those small square bales has got to be handled at least twice probably three or four times by the end of it and uh, it's just really really labor intensive so yeah there's a little bit of loss with um, you know some weathering and stuff on the outside but in the big picture, um, what's in the middle is still very, very good forage, um, and there's a lot less labor involved. So, one of the things you might be asking, well, so then why even use, what, why do guys use the strings? And the reason they use the strings is, you know, even though it's stored outside, yeah, I'm losing a little bit more on the outside of the bale. Um, so a little bit more of this is going to go. It's going to be wasted. The cattle won't eat it. They'll actually, um, they'll push it off to the side and, and, and pull it out of the feeder. And we won't even, you know, they, they won't even touch it. What they're after is like the same stuff that was <clears throat> in the other bale there is they're going in the middle and they're pulling out all the best stuff. So, but the advantage of the string is that, like I said, in the winter time, when things are frozen, you can just cut the strings off. The net, you know, it doesn't get all hung up like the net wrap. Um, so it just makes it a little bit easier. <clears throat> One of the other things that we do is uh, we put down pallets so that the hay doesn't sit directly on the ground. We don't want the hay sitting directly on the ground. We want to try and um, preserve as much of that hay as what we can. And it'll wick up moisture from the ground and start to rot the hay bale. And so we don't want that to happen either. So putting pallets down keeps the bales off the ground. It's still going to wick a little bit of moisture out of the ground, but not near as much as if those things were just sitting right on the ground. Now one of the other things you might be seeing is we're 
moving around here and the camera's picking it up is we've got hay all around us. So we've got a stack behind us, a stack here. We got that stack there that we pulled the, the hay out of so you could see how much greener it was in the middle of it, even though it was dark on the outside. Um, there's hay over there, there's hay over there. There's even a couple up oh, right there. Nope, right there, there we go. And so you might be asking, well, why do you have all these hay bales stacked up in these different areas? Why not just put them all in one spot? And the simple answer is, is that all these different groups of hay bales came from a different cutting and a different property. So this right here is all first cutting hay off of one piece of property. And I know the characteristics that are in this hay. This hay is gonna have a lot of ryegrass, clover, alfalfa, orchard grass, and brome. And so I know what the nutritional value is of this hay. I know when it was harvested, and I know it was at its peak harvest time. So each one of these groups has got the same thing. The darker one there has a higher alfalfa content in it. So I know that it's, you know, higher in protein. And so I feed these all out at different times based on the body condition of my cattle and the time of the year. You know, do they need more protein at this time? Do they need more carbohydrates and more sugars at this time? So I can go through and I can pick out which round bale I need to feed out to different groups based on what they need for their nutritional values. So that's the quick story of it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one. I'd like to get a video on body condition scores on the cattle so you can see why it's important to feed out hay and to keep the, the cattle's uh, body condition high and how it makes higher quality beef. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button. Everybody have a Merry Christmas.